Now that you've created your first invoice, the customer is going to mail you a payment at some point. Now it doesn't matter how the customer paid you, you're going to record their payment the same exact way. We're going to go in and tell QuickBooks how much the customer paid, the date they paid, all the pertinent information, and when we're done, we'll see that the invoice will show as being paid if they've paid the full amount. If they haven't, it'll show the balance, or if it's an overpayment, it will show that as well. Let me show you how to record a customer payment. Before we receive our first payment, I'd like to take you over to the Reports section QuickBooks. Just head over to your navigation bar, click on Reports, and then Reports from the submenu, and this is all the reports that are in QuickBooks. We are going to take some time in a later module and look through the different reports, but right now I'd like you to head down to a section that says, Who Owes You? These are your accounts receivable reports. If you head over to the second column, you'll see the second one is called the Open Invoices Report, and you can just click to run that one. Now these are all of the invoices that you've sent out that have not yet been paid, even if the customer owes you a penny. If you remember, in the previous section, we actually created an invoice for Freeman Sporting Goods, and we did one for 25 Twin Lake, and here it is right here, $175. I want you to notice that in any report, if you want to go to that particular transaction, you can see this is a link, and you can just click anywhere and actually open up that invoice. I wanted to show you this first because once we receive our payment, this invoice will actually disappear if it's paid in full, or you will see this invoice and the balance is owed right over here, not the $175 that it originally was invoiced for. Now that you see that, let's head back over to our customers. We'll go to sales and we'll go down to customers. Now let's go down and find our customer we're going to receive the payment for. And this is going to be Freeman Sporting Goods, 55 Twin Lake. You'll notice over in the action column that you can receive a payment. This is the receive payment window, and the first thing you'll notice is it pulled in my customer and my job. I don't need to change that unless I happen to want to pick a different customer and job. I can look for an invoice by invoice number if I want to. I can click there, just type in the invoice number and hit find, and it will search for it for me. The next thing is the payment date. I'm going to say this was received on February the 28th. And here's the payment method. Now here's where you can pick the way that the customer actually paid you. Did they pay you with cash? Did they pay you with MasterCard, Visa, PayPal? If you happen to take other payment methods you'd like to add, like Venmo or Square or even Bitcoin, just come up here to Add New. And all you have to do is type in that new payment and then just hit Save. And from now on, that payment method will actually be on the list there. Now I'm just going to say in this case it was a check though, and I'll put in the reference number. That would be the check number. And then just notice the money is going to go to an account called Undeposited Funds. Now hold that for a moment. We'll come back. I want to finish the rest of this and explain this part to you. Now over here it assumed that my customer paid me the entire balance they owe for all of their invoices. And we know that's not always the case. Here I'm going to put in the amount that the customer did pay me. Let's say the customer paid me $179. Now if you notice down at the bottom, these are all of the invoices that are still open, even if the customer owes me a penny. You'll notice what QuickBooks does is assumes the customer is paying all of the first one, the rest of the money goes to the next one, and then the balance of the money goes down to the next one, all the way down. Now that's not always how the customer has asked you to apply their payments. Let's say in this case they're not paying the first one, they're paying $175 on this last one, and they're going to pay the $4 on this one, and that's why it was $179. Always make sure that you have the correct invoices checked off and the correct amount over here that the customer is paying towards each of the invoices. A couple of other things to notice. When you look down at the bottom, there's going to be $179 worth of money that's applied. And there's no credit memos right now, but if you had one you had issued for this customer, then you could apply that credit memo to one of these invoices that would be open here. If you want to clear the payment, you could. That would let you start all over filling this form out. 
And then notice at the bottom there's a place for a memo over on the left, and there's also a place for any attachments if you wanted to add something here. And that's all you need to do to receive payments. It's a pretty easy process. But I do want to go back up to this right here where it says Deposit 2 and talk to you about what your options are. Currently, if you receive payments, the money's going into this account called Undeposited Funds. I'm going to go ahead and save this real quick, and then I want to show you where Undeposited Funds is, and then we're going to come back in a second so I can show you where your other options are. Now, if I close the Receive Payment window and head back to the Chart of Accounts, I'm going to go down here to Accounting, Chart of Accounts. You'll notice that if I go down the list, there's this account called Undeposited Funds. Currently, there's $2,241.52 in that account. This is where money sits that you've received but have not yet deposited into the bank. A good way to keep a check on yourself, if you know that everything's been deposited, this should be zero. Let's look at this for a second and see if we can figure out what money happens to be sitting in here. Notice you can click to view the register over on the right. And what you're going to notice is that right now, it looks like there are three payments sitting in undeposited funds. One of them is being the one that we just received. None of these three are in the checkbook yet because they have not yet been deposited. Okay, so let's head back over to our payment that we just looked at. I'm going to go to Sales and go back to Customers. And Let's go down and find our customer, Freeman Sporting Goods, 55 Twin Lake, and I'm just going to click on that for a moment. And here you will see the payment that we just received. I'm going to go ahead and click on that just to open it back up. Here were your other choices. I could go ahead and put the money right in the checking account, and this will skip the next step that we're going to do. But let me tell you why you may or may not want to do this. If the $179 is the only thing that's going to be in that deposit, then you can click checking, hit save and close at the bottom, and you are done with the whole process. But if you think you might receive another payment, possibly from another customer, and this one and the new payment are going to be together in the same deposit, that's when you want to pick undeposited funds. And this will make more sense once we go through and make the deposit over in the next section. But I'm going to go ahead and click Save and Close at the bottom here. And let's see if that invoice shows that it's been paid. When I go down the list and look at the invoice for $175, it does show that it's been paid in full. If there was one penny left, it would not say paid right here. That's how you receive a payment for a customer when you've sent out an invoice. The next step in the process would be to actually take that money and make a deposit. Why don't we head over into Section 5 and I'll show you how to make deposits. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To get a free QuickBooks Online Essential Keyboard Shortcuts infographic, click over there. And click over there to watch more QuickBooks videos from Simon Says It.